Hey everyone, it's Carissa Wiley here for EllenHudson.com. Thanks for joining me today. In this month's edition of the Ellen Hudson Newsletter, we are going to take a look at the We Are Memory Keepers Precision Press Advanced Stamp Positioning Tool. And I have really enjoyed getting to know this tool and kind of playing with it. I'm going to introduce it to you today, show you some of its features and some of the techniques that you can achieve with this tool. And I think this is going to give you a good overview to see if this is the right stamping tool to add to your stash. And I really have been enjoying getting to know this tool. Now here's a look at the Precision Press Advance in its packaging. It comes with the base. It comes with a couple of magnets and the stamping acrylic block. On the back, it gives you a few ideas for how you can use it. And this was helpful for me, um, looking at some of the features of it on the back of it. I like this tool a lot because, because you can take off the block that you adhere your stamps to, that you use to stamp your stamps, and you can completely replace it. So you can buy additional stamping blocks for this tool, and I think that makes it really versatile. Now, when you open up the packaging, there are some instructions. I'm going to show you how to use it today, and this is a look at the acrylic stamping block. Now, as I mentioned, you can buy extras of these. So here's an extra right here. That is going to be great for stamp layering stamps. You know those intricate flower stamps that have like four different layers? You can mount the different layers on separate blocks and mass produce those so much more quickly because you can leave each separate layer on its own block. And these are relatively inexpensive to kind of replace. You could mark one up with... Uh, most use markings if you want to and use it that way but I think it's really versatile and they kind of stack on top of each other where you can stack them on top of the tool to store up nice and compact. Now in addition to that there's also the pattern plate. Now this is long and skinny and this is really great for border stamps and the thing that I love about this is when you place it on these pegs, this We Are Memory Keepers Precision Press Advance works on a peg system. When you place it on the pegs, you can then pick this up. You can move it one peg down and you're going to get exactly one inch increments as you move it down those pegs. And I'm gonna show you a piece of pattern paper that I created with this pattern plate that I think you're really going to love. I used it in a lot of the um, Essentials by Ellen May release projects that I used, and I love the way that that stamped piece turned out. So the overall surface of this is a little over six inches by six inches, and you can see that the stamping block here has kind of this screen printed blue grid on it, their quarter inch grid. You have the little rubber feet that are flexible so you can press this down. It kind of hovers over the area until you stamp it down. There's also a couple of round disc magnets. So the platform itself is magnetic so you can use the magnets to hold your project in place as you're stamping. And you see right now that the base actually has this grid printed foam sheet on it. Now this gives you kind of a cushy area to stamp on so if you're one of those that likes to stamp on like a mouse pad, this is going to give you that kind of cushy surface. Or you can take it off and underneath, there is kind of an etched in grid on this base here. So you can kind of see the etched in grid there. This piece itself is gonna be a little easier to clean than the foam, I would imagine. So if you're gonna stamp off the edge of your project, you might wanna take the foam out. Now on the back, there's four like silicone gripper pads to kind of keep it in place on your surface as you're working. And as I mentioned before, you can stamp with or without this foam piece and it lines up beautifully on those pegs. Now I have to say, as I'm putting this back together, this is a really simple tool to use. You basically mount your clear stamp onto your stamping block that's on top. You place it over your project and then you press it down. Now, in my opinion, one of the coolest features about this Precision Press Advance is that there are two open sides. And why does that matter? Well, <laughs> let me tell you. It's because you can use any size paper in this Precision Press Advance. Because those sides are open, it allows the large paper to kind of hang off the edge and you can still use it with a 12 by 12, eight and a half by 11, or with just a standard A2 size card base if you choose. 
but it allows you that flexibility to use different sizes of paper within the Precision Press Advance. Also, you can use that acrylic stamp block with those rubber feet without the base. So you can just hover it over your project to figure out where you want to stamp and then press it down. You don't have to use it with the base. You can use it like the old school um, stamp positioners that we used to use a long time ago with the kind of foam feet. So that's kind of a cool feature as well. So now that we've kind of taken a look at the tool itself, let's put it into action and see how it performs. So I have a bunch of images here. These are from the Essentials by Ellen May 2019 release. There's a brand new leading lady, some backyard party friends that are super adorable, and also a beautiful, beautiful Mondo Wildflower set. If you haven't checked out the May release yet, I highly encourage that. But I want to stamp a bunch of these images at once. So I've lined them up on my paper. I've made sure that none of the stamps hang over the base of the press that I'm using here. And then I'm going to pick them all up with the acrylic stamping block that goes on top. Now I've brought these images over to the side and I'm going to ink them up with Gina K Jet Black Amalgam Ink. This is going to allow me to use Copics or colored pencils, watercolors with these images, whatever I choose. It's a great versatile ink. And once I get all of these images inked up, I'm going to take the plate and I'm going to line it up with the pegs on the base and I am going to place it onto the pegs. Now, once you place it onto the pegs, it's not going to stamp down. You have to put pressure to kind of um, press it down onto the paper. So it's going to kind of hover there until you press it down and press it onto the paper. And you can see, just like with any other stamp positioning tool, I'm going to make sure I walk my fingers across all of those images, especially when I'm stamping multiple images at one time. And then I'm just going to release it, allow it to pop straight back up, and then pull it off of the pegs. Now, I wanted to try out double stamping, so I'm just re-inking these stamps once again. I've made sure that my paper is in that upper left-hand corner lined up. I'm going to place this right back on my pegs after I've inked it up. Press it down, walk my fingers across all of those images, and then I'm going to release it and pull it up off of my project. And now I've been able to stamp in the same exact place twice and create a really, really dark black image for all of these stamps. Now, a lot of times once I have like gone to the work of putting all these stamps down, I stamp a few of these sheets of cardstock so that I have a bunch of images ready to color. So that's exactly what I'm going to do. I'm going to re-ink these stamps right where they are. I'm going to put a new piece of cardstock into my Precision Press Advance and just stamp them again. And a lot of times what I'll do is then I will place my dies over these images and die cut multiple images at one time as well. So now let's have a look at the pattern plate tool, which I think is a great add-on. Now this tool is great for stamping sentiments multiple times in a row onto your card front or using with border stamps. And that's exactly what I'm gonna do with it today. I have a border stamp here or a long skinny stripe. This is from the Essentials by Ellen Painted Stripes stamp set. And I'm gonna line it up at the top of my piece of cardstock here. This is a five and a half by eight and a half piece of heavyweight cardstock. And I'm gonna position my pattern plate at the very top of the pegs, as high up as I can get it. Then I'm going to take and I'm going to ink this up with some various Catherine Pooler inks and stamp it. And this is going to allow me to stamp these exactly one inch apart. So I'm starting out with the Catherine Pooler 2D Fruity ink and I'm pressing this down. I'm making sure that I press it down really good. I didn't get a good impression, but that's okay. I can just put it right back onto the pegs press down those areas where I didn't stamp well. And that's one of the beauties of a stamp positioning tool is that you can fix boo-boos really easily. And then I am going to go ahead, pull it straight up, and then I am going to clean my stamp. I'm gonna ink it up in the next color of ink, which is Catherine Pooler Polished Ink. And then I'm gonna move this down one peg. So I started there, I'm gonna move down one peg, press it down and stamp exactly one inch apart. Now you're gonna see that I'm making sure that my paper stays up in that upper left-hand corner. One of the keys 
is just keeping that paper in the same place as you stamp over and over again. Because the clear stamps are a little bit sticky sometimes, they will want to grab your paper and pull it up. So each time I stamp, I'm going to just push my paper back up into that upper left-hand corner where it's nestled between those pegs. And that's going to keep my paper in the same exact spot and allow me to continue to move one peg down and keep these stamped images exactly one inch apart. So I'm moving through all of these colors. I've used Catherine Pooler Shea Butter for the yellow. For this first green, I am using the Garden Party ink from Catherine Pooler. Then I used Grass Skirt, and I'm finishing up with Meant to Be. And like I said, each time, I am just moving this pattern plate tool one peg down. This would also be great with like a sentiment stamp. You could create a background using a sentiment stamp with them all lined up in various colors or an ombre effect. But I think this pattern plate is an absolute must have accessory for the Precision Press Advance. So I would definitely pick that up as well. So let's move on to another technique. I am going to take a piece of cardstock. It measures six inches by six inches, and I am going to draw an X from corner to corner on this cardstock. This is just helping me mark my center on this cardstock so I know where to start my stamping. And what we're gonna do is we're going to stamp a pattern by rotating our acrylic plate that is on the top and it's gonna give us kind of a kaleidoscope effect. It's gonna be really cool. I think you're gonna love it, but I'm gonna speed it up a little bit because it does take a little bit of time by the time you re-ink the stamp and reposition it and all that. So let's start out. I have this heart stamp. This is from the Essentials by Ellen High Five stamp set, and I'm gonna position it right kind of nestled to where the point touches the center point of my cardstock. And I'm going to ink it up with Catherine Pooler Meant to Be ink, and I'm going to stamp it right there. Now I'm going to take it, and I am going to re-ink it, and I'm going to take my acrylic stamping block, this piece that's on the top, and I'm going to rotate it 90 degrees, and I'm going to stamp it again. Then I can continue to re-ink and turn my block one quarter of a turn, and stamp all the way around. Now this is gonna give me almost like a flower shape here in the middle. But the cool thing about that is I can just continue to move my stamp and re-ink and continue to stamp and build a pattern. And you're gonna see me do that here. So I'm just finishing off this little pattern here in the middle with the Meant to Be ink. I've created that just by rotating my acrylic block one turn each time. And then I'm gonna clean up my stamp. I'm gonna make sure that my paper stays in that upper left-hand corner, and I'm gonna reposition my stamp here. So I'm gonna just kind of nestle it in between those other stamped images. And I, what I would do is once you have your center point marked, I would go ahead and erase this, but I've left it here so you could kind of see what I was doing. Those pencil lines will get trapped under the ink, so you just kind of want to find your center point and mark it and then maybe get rid of those lines. Otherwise, you're going to have that pencil trapped underneath your dye ink. So just kind of keep that in mind. So now I am taking and I'm continuing to build my pattern. I've repositioned my stamp. I'm inking up now in the Catherine Pooler Shea Butter ink. And once again, I am just rotating the acrylic block one quarter turn every time I stamp it down. And that's going to put those equally distant apart and kind of build this wreath-like kaleidoscope kind of circle around the center of this paper. Now, I'm sure you guys could really use your imagination and think of various patterns that you could build up using this technique. I think it's really something cool and kind of unique to this stamp positioning tool where you can just leave your paper in place and just rotate that acrylic stamping block to build up these patterns. So I've gone ahead and just kind of sped up the video here a little bit so you can watch me as I build this pattern. I'm gonna use a lot of the same colors that I used in that striped paper that I created earlier 
I'm using the Catherine Pooler Shea Butter as well as the Catherine Pooler Polished. And each time I'm just cleaning my stamp, I'm repositioning it and then just going for it. I'm inking, stamping, turning, inking, stamping, turning. And this is a look at the finished pattern that I created just using that simple heart stamp there. But I'm sure by mixing in some flowers and leaves, you could really, I mean, the sky's the limit. Now, I think I mentioned earlier that I really love that you can have replacements or extras of these acrylic stamping blocks on hand. And I think that is especially great for layering stamps. And so I wanted to kind of give you that idea here. Now, I'm only using a two-step stamp here, but if you had like a four-step stamp, this would save you a lot of time if you wanted to stamp a bunch of them. So I've gone ahead and I've mounted the outline on one acrylic block, the top acrylic block with those rubber feet there. Now I'm taking the solid fill images of these stamps. These are from the Everyday Doodles stamp set and I'm mounting them on a completely separate acrylic block here. And I can leave these in place and restamp them as many times as I want. So I'm just inking up the fill portion with the Catherine Pooler meant to be ink, and I'm just lining it up with the pegs and stamping it straight down. I have perfect alignment. Now I have the outlines on one acrylic block and the fill images on the other acrylic block. So then I can just turn my paper and I can just redo this process all over again until my heart's content. <laughs> so I've inked up once again with some black ink. I'm stamping these outline images. Now I'm going to grab the other acrylic block that has the fill images. I'm going to ink them up in some Catherine Pool or polished ink. And then I'm gonna line this up with the pegs once again, press it down. And then I have two sets of layered stamp images and I could keep going and going and going. And like I mentioned, this is only a two-step stamping stamp set here, but if you had those intricate flowers with like four different layers, you could have four different acrylic blocks and really just keep stamping those flowers over and over again. Now I have one of my acrylic blocks here and I decided I kind of wanted to mark it up. I am using a permanent marker and an A2 size card base and I'm just tracing around that A2 size card base so that when I mount stamps onto this acrylic block, I can see where they're going to fall onto my card base. Now you don't have to do this. I just thought it was kind of a cool idea where you could kind of do this and mark the center. You can see I have that dot there in the center mark. So I know where everything's kind of gonna line up on my card front when I stamp it there. So that's another great reason to have an extra one. I will say, I maybe should have marked the top of the plate rather than the back of the plate because when I put a large background stamp onto my plate, the background stamp actually pulled off that permanent marker. <laughs> so um, just keep that in mind. Maybe mark the front of the plate rather than the back of the plate. Now, another thing I thought you could do with this is just kind of mark some equidistant pencil lines. So I'm just taking that pattern plate once again I'm moving it down and I'm drawing lines with my pencils because that is a straight edge kind of ruler like tool that the pattern plate offers you and you can just kind of make markings on your card front as you need them and I think that's really a cool feature of this as well you could also use it to line up things onto your card front as you're mounting them as well to make sure that they're straight so there you have it, a look at some various different techniques, some patterns and things that you can do with the We Are Memory Keepers Precision Press Advanced Stamp Positioning Tool. I really think that every stamper should have some sort of stamp positioning tool in their stash. And I hope that this in-depth look helped you decide if this We Are Memory Keepers Precision Press Advanced is the right stamp positioning tool for you. As always, thanks for stopping by and hanging out with me today. If you're looking for product links, you'll find those in the YouTube description, or you can head on over to the ellenhudson.com blog post. That'll be linked below as well. Over there, you'll find more still shots, more information, and a complete list of supplies. I hope you enjoyed this look at the We Are Memory Keepers Precision Press Advance. If you did, be sure to give this video a thumbs up and share it with a friend. 
And don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel so you won't miss any of our paper crafting and card making video tutorials here. As always, thanks for spending time with me today. And until next time, I hope you have a fabulous day.